Are you sometimes frustrated by how much software developers disagree with each other about things? They sometimes seem vitriolic and angry at each other that the other person doesn't see their point of view. Well, stay tuned because today we're going to talk about why software developers disagree and what to do about it. Hi, I'm Jamie Edwards, and I help leaders of software development teams and software companies to do a better job releasing their software, understanding what their customers want, and having an environment where people can be as creative and innovative as possible. Today, we're going to talk about some reasons why software developers often disagree bitterly with each other, and what are some things we can do about it so that we don't disagree as strongly, and we also help others to understand us more. The first of these is the fear of being misunderstood. You know, I think the way our whole culture is today, and especially the school system that we grow up in, where we're often measured on what we know and don't know, it's really very often that we get upset or we get concerned or fearful when talking to another person if we don't think they respect or see our point of view. So I think often software developers disagree with each other simply because they're concerned that the other person doesn't understand them. You may have experienced this yourself when in a meeting maybe with someone or on a forum or chat group somewhere, you're discussing something with someone and you're almost certain that they're hearing exactly what you're telling them, but they demand that you repeat yourself in the exact words that they want you to. They're really kind of nitpicking. Well, this really stems from our desire to make sure that other people understand us as unique individuals. You know, some of this, I think, is really a byproduct of the interview process today in our industry. Often we go into an interview and even though there may be some information about the company and the process and soft skills that they'd like us to have, the bulk of the interview process typically, even in senior roles in technology, focuses a lot on the technology. So we often prepare ourselves for trying to come across like we know everything. And that can extend into once you get hired or if you're even a consultant, your job where you keep that personality as part of your permanent you know, way you interact with people. And it can come across really hard for other people to communicate and work with you because you're so fearful of being seen as not knowing something. And often that causes you to come across as very disagreeing with other people and very hard to just come to consensus and agreement on something. The second reason I think that software developers often disagree is they just have a narrow experience. You know, early in my career, I spent eight years at the same company, and though during my time there I worked on Java and .NET and Visual Basic, I mean, this is going back, this was 20 years ago, but you know, um, a wide variety of technologies, web development, backend stuff, manufacturing devices, uh, device drivers. You know, I'd had a lot of experience, if you think about it, over eight years, but you can, you can go through that process of having experience and it can kind of give you the perspective that you know actually a lot more than you do about this technology industry. And, you know, me having been in this now for, what, 21 years, the longer I do this, the more I realize how much I just can't know everything. And so I think one of the reasons, though, that software developers and software professionals tend to disagree a lot is they experience something on their job or maybe even five different jobs, and, and that's worked for them. And so they're convinced that that's going to work for everybody else. And, you know, the way we communicate in society today, we don't always give the other person the benefit of the doubt. We're really worried about being seen as smart and knowing everything. And so sometimes we just tend to come across pretty brash and pretty much like, you know, well, you don't know what the heck you're talking about. And really, I think a lot of that is just, again, narrow experience. Another one of the reasons I think software professionals tend to disagree with each other is simply it's a byproduct of how detail-oriented our work has become. You know, software development and software architecture and 
operations and a lot of these types of jobs require so much detail. You know, if you've been doing this even a couple years, you know that making a single mistake on one line of code is all it takes to make an entire system just not work. And I think the longer that you work in this industry, we can actually tend to start to treat people like that. And we can start to expect that others need to be incredibly detailed with us. And often this can create a situation where when we interact with other people, we uh, pull apart every little thing they say and if they're you know inaccurate in our mind about one little detail we have to call them on it and we have to make sure they know that they're not saying it you know correctly in our eyes and i really think that disagreement really is just a byproduct of you know how much in our jobs we're expected to be so detailed with machines and computers and programming languages but there's a time and a place for that and we just have to be a little bit careful that we don't start treating people like apis that we just invoke or call when we need something you know humans have relationships and emotions and needs and there's more complexity to having a, you know a, a good relationship and seeing eye to eye and coming to agreement with people than just the details. Another reason I think software developers and professionals tend to disagree with each other is they may have been hurt in the past. You know, I certainly have been hurt many times in my career by, you know, putting a lot of hard work into achieving some goal that wasn't you know, that didn't turn out the way that I hoped it did at our, at our company. You know, I certainly have been disappointed in my past in my career at many times. And I think a lot of times we hold that inside and we're bitter about it. And so when we act, interact with other people, there can be a tendency for us to kind of take out on other people that frustration or disappointment. And it can come across just in disagreement and and belittling and nitpicking people and and that really doesn't serve anyone unfortunately but it's something that i think is very common as the cause of disagreement with other developers you know this is something i have to work on all the time not to let really the baggage of my prior projects and experiences cause me to treat other people unfairly and just disagree with them and not be open to just you know what they have to say and what their experience is and the last thing i want to talk about that i think really contributes quite a bit to why we tend to disagree is you know if you think about the type of work we're doing in software we're really trying to accomplish an outcome of some sort and so we tend to focus a lot on the how how do we actually accomplish something what is the sequence of steps that we need to follow? What is the process that we need to go through to accomplish some goal? But it's really easy for us to lose sight of why. You know, why do we want to do agile software development? Why might we want to use, you know, a model view controller architecture or a model view view model architecture? You know, why would we want to do continuous delivery or DevOps? And what I've found, and this is just my experience that's interesting is, you know, if you really get close with people on, on the why and not the how, well, then it's much easier to work with them because you, you don't really get hung up on every little detail. I mean, I mean, yeah, you have to be in agreement with somebody on the steps that you're going to take, but oftentimes I think people lose sight, myself included, of you know, the reason why we're even doing something. And so we start to kind of disagree with each other on all the mechanics. When we're not really in agreement on why we're doing it in the first place. And if we can find a way to get to that agreement quicker, then I think we spend a little less time uh, being frustrated with each other when it may just simply be that we, we're not on the same page about the why we're doing something. So now that we've talked a little bit about why software professionals disagree with each other, what are some of the things that we could do to maybe help come to agreement easier? Well, I think the first thing is to get to know people more. Get to know people on a personal and authentic 
level. You know, when we work on a job and we're often demand, demands are placed on us to produce some sort of deliverable, we focus so much of our energy. I mean, I know it takes a lot of energy. I've been doing it a long time. I'm sure if you're watching this channel, you have too. Uh, but getting to know the people that you work with and knowing, you know, what makes them tick? How are they different? What's their history? What really motivates them? And not just in their job and technology, but as a person, as an individual their life you know some people are more private than others and that's perfectly fine but I find and this is just my experience hopefully it may be yours too that when you know somebody pretty well they tend to give you more leniency in your explanations they tend to give you the benefit of the doubt and it's really authentic relationships with people where you actually know them that are going to cause the most consensus between you and other people and avoid disagreement the second thing I think we can do to help others agree with us more often and have there be less disagreement is simply to assume that they have your best interest in mind and that they have a good reason for disagreeing with you. You know, oftentimes, again, and this goes back to my first point about why I think software developers and professionals tend to disagree, there's something unique at that company or in their experience or their solution or maybe their business model that calls for something that maybe in your work experience has never worked for you. Or maybe architecturally, it really looks backwards or doesn't make sense. But I think oftentimes we can jump to the conclusion that something's designed improperly or the technologies that were selected weren't right when we haven't really spent the time understanding the unique circumstances around that company, its technology selection, its history, how the product has evolved. So I think if we really approach other people with more of a mindset of, you know, I'm going to hear you out. You know, I'm hearing some things that I wouldn't necessarily choose, but I'm going to try to keep an open mind and assume that you have a good reason for sharing this with me. And then really just ask follow-up questions and get to know why that solution or why that approach is something they're recommending. recommending. Uh, I, I think that kind of an attitude tends to really help a lot, especially in my experience in consulting. You know, if, if you first get to know a group of technologists and your first you know, attempt to build a bridge and get to know them is just to show off about how much you know and start giving them recommendations about how what they're doing is wrong. Well, can you really blame them for being somewhat turned off and not wanting to communicate and be open with you? The third thing I think we can do to really help avoid the, the byproduct disagreements is to try not to take it personally. You know, there's a book called The Four Agreements that talks about this. That's a, a very well-read, very well-known book. And it can be really hard not to take things personally, especially when the way that we communicate sometimes, especially with email and chat, when we're not face-to-face -face with a person, it's really easy for us to read something someone said or hear a recommendation they're making and get defensive about it and have an emotional reaction and take it personally. But I think, you know, going back to my prior point, if we assume that people have our best interests in mind and that even if they say something that we're just convinced, oh man, that's totally something a jerk would say, you know, taking a step back, being more patient and more mature and thinking, you know, I really want my ideas to get used. I really want this person to support me. So I'm going to not snap back at them I'm, and I'm not going to assume that they, that they mean something or they're trying to do something that frustrates me. Even if I feel offended, and even if what they told me, I know, you know, from many other experiences, tends to always result in them treating me a certain way, you know, I can't control that person, but I can always control how I react to it. And this is really hard. I mean, this is something that, again, doing this for 21 years, I've spent my whole life trying to get better at this, but I think it'll really help you and help others not let disagreements frustrate you and get you to have an adversarial relationship with people if you simply assume that they have your best interest in mind and you really are just open and patient with them and just let them disagree and try to understand what they have to say and not take it personally. Much easier said than done, I know. Another thing I think we can do to avoid 
disagreements really damaging our relationships is you've heard the expression, pick your battles. You know, if you have to be right about everything every time or be seen as the expert and always be on the right side of whose decision was made in whose favor, you're going to disagree with people more often and they're probably going to like you less. So that's something that I've had to work at and I would encourage you to as well, which is just, if you're gonna disagree with somebody, really make sure that it's something important that you do disagree with them on. And that leads me to my next point, which is similar to what I talked about at the beginning of the video, focusing on the why versus the how can really help dramatically with disagreeing with people. When we keep people focused on why we're doing something, or often we're in a conversation talking about how and we're able to bring them back up to why, it's amazing how quickly we can get agreement from people when we remember, you know, we've been nitpicking, let's say, aspects of Scrum or Kanban. Why are we doing this in the first place? What is it really buying the organization? And sometimes that's all it takes to get focused and back on track. And the last recommendation I'd like to make with respect to helping avoid disagreements and them becoming a problem is to learn to appreciate others that have just learned something that you already know. You know, I once told a colleague of mine that got to an architect level of skill that I'd worked with many, for many years in my career, my personal opinion, which was that one of the hardest things for you now is going to be working with a lot of people that you know more about things than they do. It's really common that if you're sitting in a meeting with someone and talking to them, they may start to tell you details about something you're very familiar with already. And the tendency is to just say, I know, you don't need to tell me. The way many people learn best is by explaining something to someone else. So if you shut them down when they're in the middle of doing that, you're really denying them the ability to learn it better. And this is something that I've really had to work strongly at, but I've gotten much better at it over the years. And I find that you're really giving that other person a chance to be excited to share with you what they just learned. Why deny them that chance? They're only gonna be that much more committed to doing what you obviously already know and you're hoping that they'll do. So if you liked this video today, please give me a thumbs up below, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks.